Hi, DLRs. Joe here from Alarmgrid, and today we're going to talk about the difference between the Vista 20P and the Vista 21 IP systems. Now, we have a 21 IP right here, and we have a Vista 20P right here. As you can see, the boards look slightly different, but the systems are very, very similar as far as features go. They both support up to 49 user codes. They both can support up to 48 zones. They both have eight hardwired zones right on the board, which we'll go over in a second. And they both are fully compatible with Honeywell's remote services, which means that you can get Total Connect 2.0 on either system. And they can both be remotely uh, accessed by your security company as long as you have the infrastructure set up to do so. Now, if we take a look at the boards, over here we have the 20P. Here's your power connection. Then you have your ECP bus. Then you have the terminals for zones to land the wires right onto the board. It supports up to eight of them. And then over here we have our telco connections and then finally our ground lug. Now if you look at our 21 IP over here, the board is slightly larger, but the terminals are literally exactly the same on the system. As I stated before, they both support the same amount of zones. The biggest difference between the two panels is the communication paths. If you are in the market for a new panel and you want to buy a Vista, it's always recommended to get the 21 IP as you get additional features right on the board that you won't have on the 20P. If you look at our 21 IP board, you'll see that up here we have an RJ45 jack where you can plug in an Ethernet cable to connect it to a wired Ethernet network. And then right in the middle of the board here, we have this chip that's called the Vista GSM 4G. What this does is it allows it to communicate with an AT&T cellular network, and you can pop it right onto the board. It's a great integrated proprietary device that you can upgrade the system with, and with both Ethernet and cellular running at the same time, the system will use dual path communication. What that means is that if the Ethernet goes down on the system, the system is automatically going to switch over to cellular to continue signaling. It's a great way to have a redundant communication path on your security system, and it's always recommended to do if you want to go that route. Now, on the 20P, the only communicator on the board natively is the telco terminals right over here. You'll see that they're also on the 21 IP. Now, with a phone line connection, you won't have any of the remote services on the 20P or the 21 IP, such as Total Connect 2.0 and letting your security company access the panel to do remote programming. On the 20P, though, you can add communicators that give it cellular and or Ethernet. As you can see on the box, we have a device that's called the uh, GSM X4G. What this is, this is a cellular-only communicator. It connects right to the, the box itself if you like. You can also mount it on a wall, and it has a four-wire connection that connects back to the ECP bus on the panel. They're great to use, but this communicator is only going to give you a cellular communication path. If you want to get Ethernet on the system and or uh, cellular and Ethernet, you'll need one of a few different kinds of communicators. For Ethernet only, and the communicator, the, the three different kinds, they actually have the same housing. So for Ethernet only on this system, you're going to get a communicator that looks like this called the 7847i. And as an Ethernet jack right in the communicator, it connects just like the GSM X4G to the ECP bus with a four-wire connection, and it gives it an Ethernet communication path. If you don't want to use this style of cellular-only communicator, you can also get a device that's called the GSM V4G. It literally looks exactly like this. It connects with a four-wire connection to the panel, and it gives you a cellular-only communication path. But the communicator that we recommend to use on this system is called the IGSM V4G, which is what I have right here. If we open it up, if I can get it open, we'll see that on the board itself, we have a RJ45 jack right here where you can plug it into a wired Ethernet uh, network. And then right here we have our cellular communicator. Now this does give the system a dual path communication just like our uh, 21 IP. And it connects with a four wire connection from these terminal blocks right here. This communicator is going to ship with a transformer that you can use standalone to uh, power, the power the system or the device itself. Or you can actually swap the transformer on the Vista panel wire this up in parallel with the Vista panel's AC lugs, and then that one transformer can power both the panel and the communicator at the same time. Now, 
These external communicators, they are compatible with the Vista 21 IP. It's not recommended to use them as you're going to lose the onboard Ethernet jack on the system if you use an external communicator. The reason being is that to use an external communicator on the 21 IP, you have to disable the internal IP path so that it looks to use that external communicator. Right here, you see that you'll see there's small little pins with a jumper on them. There's three pins and the jumper is on the top one right now. To use an external communicator, you'll have to power the system down 100% and then move the jumper to the bottom pin. So it'd be in the middle and the bottom one. What that'll do is it'll turn off the internal communication path and have it look for an external communicator. What this means is that if you get a cellular only external communicator for the 21 IP, such as the GSM X4G, you won't be able to use the internal communication path, the Ethernet port, for a dual path setup with an external cellular communicator. You can install an IGSM V4G onto the 21 IP, but you're spending more money than you need to, as it already has an onboard Ethernet communicator. So, in the event that you do have one of these communicators on your Vista and you want to use it, maybe you don't have the Vista GSM 4G module, keep in mind that you can add an external communicator to the 21 IP. It's just not recommended. So those are the big differences between the 20 and the 21 IP. If you did enjoy the video, feel free to subscribe. If you want us to update you about future videos, hit the notification button. We'll do so when we do post them. And if you have any questions, head over to the website, give us a call, or send us an email. We'll be happy to help. Thanks for watching, and have a great day.